Greetings, mathematicians of all ages. Today's lesson is solving equations involving addition and subtraction. So in previous lessons, what we've been doing is uh, been, we've been given a variable expression, <clears throat> and from that variable expression, we've basically been plugging in numbers uh, for the variable, getting used to how variables work. So again, yesterday, for yesterday's lesson, that was something like x plus 8 for x is 6. For x equals 6, we'd plug in the 6. <clears throat> we'd do 6 plus 8, which is 14. So we were plugging it in, <clears throat> but those are variable expressions, not equations involving variable expressions. For something to be an equation, it needs to have a not only a variable expression, something like x plus 6, but it'll also now we'll have an equals and then something on the other side of the equals, like that. And today, rather than being given the value of the variable and plugging it in, our goal today is to be able to find what the variable stands for. Because as you remember from a previous lesson, all a variable does is hold the place of a number. That's all it does. So even right now, you're probably thinking, oh, this is, this is simple. Clearly, x has to equal 4 for 4 plus 6 to equal 10. And that's true. But what we want to do today is start to move out of the mind frame of what plus 6 equals 10. And our goal is to start thinking about this slightly more algebraically, which involves um, doing things to both sides to, in order to solve for the variable. Okay, So to start that discussion, the way we need to think about all, <clears throat> let's put that, bring that back. The way we need to think about all equations is we need to think about them basically as a scale that I'm constantly balancing. And the equal sign is always going to line up with the fulcrum of the, of the scale there. So my goal in all equations is to always keep the scale level. So if I take something away from one side, I have to take it away from the other side. Otherwise, it's not going to stay even. So now let's just think a little bit more about this scale. So again, I said our goal is to always keep it equal. Okay. So let's say I have four blocks on this side, and I have four blocks on this side. That's the only way, if they were drawn the same, that's the only way that this is all going to stay even, because I have the same amount on the left side, the same amount on the right side, and it's going to stay even. Now, if I take one away on the left side, you know that this side of the scale would go up and this one would go down simply because of weight. Um, when we're doing equations, we never want that to happen. So since I took one away on this side, that was right there, I also have to take one away on this side. Okay, And now it's still even. And again, remember this is like an equals. So again, if I take two more away on this side, I have to take two more away on this side. Okay, Now, let's start thinking about it in terms of equations. In an equation, you know, the one side's always going to have a, a variable, a, a variable expression. And let's just stick with addition for now. Okay, So I have y plus 4 on that side of the scale. And let's say I have um, 12 on this side. Okay, Now, if we can think about that y, let's just make another drawing down here. If we can think of that y kind of as a mystery box, because remember, variables simply just hold the place of a number. So if we can think about it as a as some number I'm trying to figure out. And on this side, you can remember I have four, you know, the mystery blocks plus four. Okay? And on this side, I have twelve blocks. Okay? On that side, I have 12 blocks. Well, if I want to get mystery box by itself, I have to get rid of these four on this side. And since I got rid of four on that side, in order to keep the scale even, I have to get rid of four on this side as well. You can see that eight are left, and mystery box is keeping the scale even when there's eight over there, which means y has to be 8. And if we check that, of course, it's absolutely right. 8 plus 4 is 12. And the whole time you're probably thinking to yourself, yeah, 
I just, again, thought, what plus 4 is 12, and that's 8. And that's okay, but we need to start shifting our thinking slightly. So now, rather than drawing it all out, um, let's just start with, a, with an equation. Remember, an equation will have an expression equals and something on both sides. So let's go to z here. So let's do z plus 3 equals 7. Okay. Now I could draw the whole scale out and we could add boxes and take away boxes. But now instead of using boxes, I'm going to start to teach you how to do this uh, using algebra and the exact way I want you to write it. Okay. So again, if we picture z as mystery box, I have mystery box and I'm adding 3 to it. And I have uh, seven blocks, if you will, on this side. Okay. In order to get z by itself, I have to get rid of this 3. Okay. And here's how I want you to write it. Right underneath that side of the equation, since I'm adding 3 on that side, I actually want to take away 3 from that side. And since we're dealing with the scale, if I'm taking 3 away on that side, on the left side, I also have to take 3 away on this side. Now, on this side, on the left side, you can see I have z plus 3 minus 3. You know that the plus 3 and the minus 3 are going to go away. Okay, because I have three extra blocks. And uh, what I like to do oftentimes is actually just put a slash through those to show those are gone. And so if I have z plus 3 minus 3, all that I'll have left on this side is z. Because I had three more blocks and I took them away. On this side, I did 7 minus 3, and I got 4. And again, if we, we can always check our answer. If I plug 4 back in here, 4 plus 3 will give me 7. So that's good. Let me just show you two more, again, using that exact uh, notation of how I want you to write it down. All right, we need a variable here. Let's do an outlet. So outlet will usually look like that one slightly bigger, right? Something like that. All right, so outlet plus 6 equals, mm, let's not get too high yet. Let's do... Uh, 11 okay so again I could think about it in terms of the scale I have six extra on the left side that I need to get rid of so I can get the variable outlet all by itself but here's how I want us to write it we're subtracting six on this side since I have six extra over here which means I have to subtract six on this side because I got to keep it even again I'm gonna cross these out the plus six minus six all I'm left with is outlet on this side and I have 11 minus 6 on the right side, which gives me outlet equals 5. I check it, plug 5 back in for outlet, 5 plus 6 is indeed 11. Now, the reason we want really want to start thinking about it this way is for my last example, let's do, we'll just use A. It's going to start getting much bigger where it's not mental math. And if we have the process down, then it'll just be very straightforward. So for example, A plus 23 equals um, 62. There probably aren't many of us who are thinking, what plus 23 equals 62? You know, we probably won't be able to, to get that mentally. So then we simply follow the process that we've been using. Since I have 23 extra on this side and I want to get A all by itself, I need to take 23 away from this side. But to keep the scale even, to keep the equation even, if I want to do that on the left side. I have to do the same thing on the right. The plus 23 minus 23 goes away. All I'm left with on this side is A. And now I just simply do the subtraction. I can't do 2 minus 3, so I take away here. 12 minus 3 is a 9. 5 minus 2 is a 3. A equals 39. And then if I plug that back in, 39 plus 23 will indeed be 62. So that was a bunch of addition. Let's look at subtraction now, though. And subtraction, unless we're using some kind of algebra tiles or modeling, um, I can't really quite draw a picture um, that's going to make much sense. So all we'll do is take what we were doing in addition, kind of apply that to subtraction. So let's say this time we just use a letter. So why don't we use headphones? That's not terrible. All right, so headphones minus five 
equals 13. Okay. Now, previously, we were always adding something to, ver to the variable. This time, I'm subtracting something. So if I have mystery box, and whatever is in mystery box, if I'm taking away 5 to get 13, in order to get mystery box back to its original value, what I have to do is add 5 to both sides. And what I'm doing right now is I'm doing something called using the inverse operation. So in the original, I was using subtraction. When I want to figure that out algebraically, I have to use the inverse operation to kind of cancel that all out. right? And since I added 5 to the left side, I need to add 5 to the right side. Um, since this is all canceled out, all I have left over here is headphones equals, now 13 plus 5 is clearly 18. Plug it back in to try it. 18 minus 5 will indeed give me 13. But let's get even bigger. Let's go back to a letter here. Let's do B minus um, 27 is 112. So this is the reason we need to learn the process again. Uh, many of us won't be able to mentally say what minus 27 is 112. Okay. So since in the original I was subtracting, in order to get rid of that side and just in order to get B back to its original value to find out what it is, I need to use the inverse operation. I need to add 27 to both sides. My 27s are gone here. The minus, the minus 27, the plus 27, those are both gone. All I'm left with is B on this side equals, and now I simply just do the addition, 9, 3, 1. So B is going to be 139. When I plug it in, I can certainly always you know, do the work if that's not mental. Check it, you know, if I'm plugging 139 back in for B. My minus seven, three minus two, one minus nothing, which is 112, which is what I wanted. So let me just do two more, one addition, one subtraction as a, as a final review. And uh, well, we'll probably have you try a few after that. So, um, looks like we're up to C. Let's do C plus six equals uh, 78. And let's do D minus 4 is 20. Why don't you uh, pause the video, give these a shot, and then resume it when you're done. Okay, so since in this original I'm adding 6 to C, I need to subtract 6 to get C all by itself. I subtract 6 from both sides, my 6's are gone, I'm left with C equals I do the math, that's 72, so C equals 72. On this side, since I'm subtracting in the original, I need to add 4 to both sides, always keeping that scale even. I'm left with D on this side, I get D equals 24. Okay, one more on your own. Let's do, looks like we're up to E. E plus 72 equals 345. Go ahead and pause the video, give it a shot. Okay, and this one, since I'm adding in the original, I need to subtract to get E all by itself. This is gone. Since I'm subtracting on the left side, I need to subtract on the right side. I'm left with E equals, this works, 72. So E equals 273. Okay, so that's solving equations involving addition and subtraction. One final thing that your homework will ask you is it'll give you an equation like k plus 12 equals, well, I don't know, 15. And then they'll put a semicolon and then a number. And what they want you to do is, they will, they're they asking you, is for a solution for k. And all we do for that is we plug in their suggested solution to see if it works. Uh, 4 plus 12 is 15. Well, 4 plus 12 would be 16 which is not equal 15. So then we would, um, for that kind of problem, we would just say no, because the book is asking, is this a solution for this equation? We plug it in, we give it a shot, and uh, see if it is a solution. So that's solving equations involving addition and subtraction. See you next time.